Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum, Rahmatullah. Sheikhna, we've been discussing Khums and we've been discussing um, how to pay your Khums, we've been discussing um, what it's obligatory upon, and also we're discussing the date of when to start paying Khums and uh, whether you should, you know, have paid the easy way, as you said, or the difficult way, which people don't really go for. What I wanted to ask you, Sheikh, is in regards to the date, what happens when an individual deliberately and accidentally doesn't pay his khums on the date specified? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. اللهم صل على in the case of deliberate, this individual is making a haram act. Um, it is a forbidden act in which the one delays. And as I mentioned in the previous episode, that khumus becomes immediate. Mm. On the due date, you must pay it straight away. For any delays, if there are excuses, uh, then you have to ask the permission from the, from the marja, from the hakim al -shara to allow you to have some more time uh, to be able to uh, calculate and, and work out uh, your khumus. Otherwise, you cannot delay it deliberately, and that's, of course, con con considered to be a uh, um, haram act, forbidden act, and uh, remains this person to be liable to, to this payment. And um, the best thing is to reach out a settlement with the Hakim al-Shara with regard to this act. This uh, act, Sheikhna, is it permissible to delay the date or to uh, backdate paying the khums? Again, the one should refer to his merger to the Hakim Shar, to the jurist, to allow him for uh, the change of the date, and um, of course, whatever is left over you know, from the days which, in which the, the time has changed and they, they have to sort it out, basically, because it's been pushed back or forward. And in other words, the khumus payment will be either delayed more or paid earlier, for example. Mm -hmm. All that um, case and calculations should be referred back to the marja and the hakim al sharia and to ask permission. Ahsant. Sheikh, what about those who forget the date and let's say there's an individual and he's forgotten the, um, the start of his khums year um, what happens in that case? Such individuals who forget the date of their khums um, they can set a new date in the year and they start paying the khums on that based on that new day um, otherwise as a precaution um, they should observe uh, precaution by choosing the nearest date, as the mentions by the Sayyid. Um, in this case, then, they can actually follow this date. Otherwise, they can choose their own uh, new date. Shaykhna, when specifying the start of the fiscal year, for a person who has never calculated and paid homes before, is it mandatory to take into account everything in his possession? Such individuals should go back and refer to their marja and, uh, or the representative of the marja and to reach a settlement with the marja to see how much they have to pay uh, khumus with regard to their scenario and, 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 and case. So the best thing is to refer to the marja himself. Shaykhna, let's take an individual who has never paid khums in his life. Um, I mean, apart from the essentials, such as, you know, his property, his, his clothes, and, and um, maybe his, his uh, you know, motor vehicle, is everything else put under, you know, does it, does it categorically become obligatory to pay khums on those items? Of course. Um, anything you haven't paid khums for becomes wajib. However, 
uh, for such scenario and case, again, uh, the one should go and refer back to his own marja and, and jurist, and to reach a settlement with that marja and alim to see how much he needs to pay. Because sometimes there is something called musaliha, settlement, in which um, the one might be uh, able to, for example, instead of paying khumus for the whole entire wealth he has, for example, or, mm -hmm. or assets, the musaliha, the settlement will reach an agreement in which the marja will take an, am an amount from that individual instead of the whole amount, for example. So that's why the settlement is there, the musaliha is there to reach an agreement between the two parties that how much he needs to pay. So it's up to the marja to decide how much he needs to pay. Ah, Sheikh, now, um, in regards to sometimes we receive cash sums. Um, sometimes, you know, people owe us money and they, they pay us. If this happens, let's say, a week before my home state or a month before my home state, and I'm busy doing my own calculations. Should I include it into the upcoming home state, or should I uh, add that to the next year? Even one day remaining from your due date of the homos, if on that last day of the year you received an amount of money, cash, or I mean other means, bank account, and so forth, one day before uh, the due date that money becomes due to be paid homos on that date. So you cannot keep it for the next year. Mm -hmm. um, you must pay homos for whatever you have gained and acquired as wealth, as money, um, just by the due dates of the homos in which you have set. Sheikhna, what about uh, sometimes we get money from insurance companies. For example, um, if I have an accident, sometimes you know, there's a payout for me. Um, if, the, if I've injured myself at work or, or something like that, sometimes there's compensation that's paid. Is it obligatory to pay khums on such um, policies that we've taken out? If that is very near to your uh, due date of the homos, yes, you have to pay homos for, of course. It's very near, let's say, the accident happened just, a, let's say, two weeks ago, and you were paid as compensation just two or three days before your actual due date. Then in this case, you have to pay the homos. Ahsant. Sheikhna, what happens when I've got some money, let's say my payment, uh, my wages coming in on a certain day, couple of days before my home's due date, but my wages have now become delayed by a week. So it's gonna, I'm going to receive that money after my home's due date. Do I add those wages into my next home's due date or do I use it in the previous one? Do I pay for it and then just, just receive the money? Well, the homes becomes wajib on this payment, all that's been delayed because it was assigned to be paid before the due date of yes. the homes. Mm -hmm. So this homes becomes wajib to be paid on uh, this income, this way, the these wages. The oncoming date. Okay. Exactly. And it's considered to be as the income of the previous year and not the, the income of the coming year because this money was assigned, as I've mentioned, to be paid before the due date of the homos. So whatever is paid or to be paid and now has been delayed, it goes back to, backdated to uh, the day before the uh, due date of the Khumus. Ahsant. Sheikh, likewise with um, you know, uh, relatives giving money. For example, we have fathers who give their children money for um, their expenses or school dinners or, or so forth. Um, and vice versa, sometimes we have other family members give money. Let's say the money, they've already paid khums on this money and now they're, they're giving it to their fellow family members. Do they have to pay khums on that money? So the people who have received it, do they have to pay homes on that money? Yes, as I've mentioned previously as well, that whatever the, uh, the family members they get um, as a source of money, income or gift or whatever else, and that money is remained. You know, sometimes I receive this money from my parents, gifts, for example, and I spend them, that's fine, it's yours. 
But sometimes I keep them, I save them. I save the gifts, I save the money, and, it, and it's there for the whole year. And the time of the hummus comes, the due date, then I have to calculate them, and of course the hummus becomes wajib on these items in which I have to pay on. It's funny, Sheikh, because you mentioned saving um, and, and saving money. I mean, do we have to pay homes on saving money, especially if we're trying to get married? Let's say someone's trying to get married and he starts to save money because he can't afford it right now. Does he have to pay homes on that money, you know, that he's, he's saving up in order to get married? You would see similar stories about those who try to save money for the marriage, for buying a property, to buy a new car, for example, for the university fees, for example, for the students. Um, to buy anything else for the holidays, for example, some people plan ahead to go to a big holiday, so they try to save. <clears throat> Whatever is known to be as savings and leftovers at the end of the year and reaches the due date of the hummus payment, then all these have to be paid hummus for. Um, you take out 20% and then you can spend the rest halal, inshallah. Is that the same for when buying a house? A lot of people try to save money to put a deposit on the house. Uh, do we have to pay homes on, on those savings as well? Yes, the same applies as well. Ahsant. Um, Sheikhna, in regards to a business owner, now this person solely depends on the capital of the business to have a, have a livelihood. Um, is it mandatory for that person to spend to pay homes on that capital? Yes, it becomes mandatory and wajib as well. Okay. If that capital remains without spending and khumus payment, then the one must pay khumus. You know, sometimes you've paid the khumus for this capital and now you invest it in a business. The money is halal now. You can spend it and uh, use it and uh, to set up a business, for example. The money is halal. But sometimes you never paid for it any hummus. And now you have it there as a capital. And you set up a business. And now the, the year comes, the due date comes of the hummus. And you haven't paid hummus for this capital. Now you have to pay hummus for uh, this remaining capital. Um, because at the end of the day, you have to purify your wealth, your money. So be it in the means of savings or capital or money leftovers. Mm -hmm. Uh, you still have to pay hummus. When you pay the hummus, whatever is left is halal, that's it. You don't have to pay again. Mm. So the capital, if you pay it now, halas. No more payments is required. Unless the capital grows, you get out of it mm. more in income and profit. You pay for the hummus of the extra, for the excess, if they are left over for the next coming year and due date. MashaAllah, Ahsan. That was one thing we haven't really discussed is um, when you pay homes, how often do you pay on a certain amount? I mean, let's say I paid my homes and I was remaining, uh, there's a thousand pounds remaining after it. And then uh, for the next year, you know, I, 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 you know, I save some money and now I've got two thousand. Do I pay two home? Do I have to pay the homes on the two thousand or do I deduct one thousand because that's, I've paid homes on that already and I've got another one thousand and I pay 20 percent on that? How does it work? As mentioned that if you have paid homes previously for an amount, you don't have to pay again. So uh, you paid 1,000 for the previous year, homos, that's it, you keep it away. And whatever you gain this year, which is the second thousand that you have gained and acquired, you just have to consider this 1,000, the extra, the excess, the surplus, and you pay the homos for this only this 1,000 left. Mm. So the previous 1,000 is homes, that's fine, it's paid. Only for this new 1,000 that you've gained and acquired this year. Um, Shaykh, what happens if, um, you know, I saved, um, let's say I saved 1,000. And when it came to the next homes, I had uh, 800. Or only, I, I spent two, um, 200 pounds out of that 1,000. I've already paid homes on it. Um, but now... I had 800 the second year, but the third year I had 900, so I've gained an extra 100. Do I pay homes on that extra 100, or is it because it's all under the 1,000 that I paid homes on, there's no need for me to pay it? Exactly, you pay for that extra 100 pounds that you made okay. the following year. 
So mm -hmm. the first year you paid the hummus for the 1,000. Yes. Clear. Second year you have uh, 800, you said? Yeah, from that 1,000, I've yes. spent 200. I've got 800 left. Again, there's no hummus because you because already, paid, already, paid, hummus on it. already okay. paid hummus for the 1,000. Yes. And now it's gone down. Yes. Decreased. Mm -hmm. So there's no hummus for the decrease. Yes. The following year is what? An increase. 900. Yes, increase 100. 100. Yes. Yeah. So you only pay for the hummus for that extra 100 okay, yeah, remaining. Um, and the 800 is yours again. Yeah, it's quite. It's, it's funny how it's only, you know, you only pay it on a certain amount once. It's not reoccurring. Um, you know, these Western governments have different ideas with us. Ahsan, thank you very much, Sheikhna, for tonight's uh, discussion. And thank you to all of you for joining us. Inshallah, you'll join us on the next episode of Ahkam SOS. Where we'll be discussing more on Khums, Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Ah, 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 ah.